All right. Shalom. Shalom. Ahab wa Maratha. First and foremost, facing the east, I want to give all praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bahashim, Yahweh Shai, Wahat, Rakat, Wadash, and double honors to the elder apostles, the prophets, and the teachers at GMS that have been bringing out this 100% truth for the last 30 plus years. And to the disciples. And the sincere Akiawa Akwa, the, the, the students, and the sincere brothers and sisters of the one third, salutations. All right, we're going to get right into it today. Today's class is going to be, I'm just going to call it Jacob's Trouble. So let's just go right into it. And I'm going to get these precepts, and you're going to, you're going to be like, what? All this is written in the Bible? No wonder they don't want us. Do you know that it was illegal for us to read the Bible? And that's why they say you put something in a, if you want to hide something from a nigga, put it in a book. It was punishable by um, a lashings to read a regular book. If you're caught reading, but if you were caught reading the Bible, it was punishable by death. Now let me show you why. Because <laughs> when we break these scriptures down, the real prophets, or I will say I'm a disciple, a student of the prophets, and so they've taught me how to break down the scriptures correctly also. I don't want to sit there and try to be prideful and blow myself up. I'm only a student. And if you want to be a teacher, it tells you you have to become a student again. So you have to be a student no matter what. You don't get to be what you think you are until the most high puts you in that position. You're always learning, right? Always learning. But remember, don't be one of those people that are always learning, never coming to the truth. <laughs> we got to make sure that when we're learning, we're getting it. So... Like I said, this class is going to be called Jacob's Trouble. So let's go right to it. Jeremiah chapter 30 and verse 7, and it reads, Alas, for the day is great, so that none is like it. It is even the time of Jacob's trouble, but he shall be saved out of it. That's very important. So the first thing that the Most High is letting us know is that there is going to be a time of great trouble, but Yahweh Bahashim Yahweh Shai is going to save the chosen elect, that's that one third, out of it. Let's move around a little bit. I'm just gonna jump around, bring out some notes, you know how I do. Joel, chapter two. And um, we're gonna start from the top. Blow ye the trumpet in Zion, and sound an alarm in my holy mountain. Let all the inhabitants of the land tremble, for the day of Yahweh cometh, for it is near at hand. So when it says blow you the trumpet, that's me. When it's when they tell you to come out and, and preach through the highways and the hedges, or when you're teaching your brothers, or exhorting and encouraging your brothers in the truth, that's blowing the trumpet. Now when you hear the truth come out, it should make you tremble because we're coming to the end. I just told you that we're coming into a great time of trouble, but only the righteous and the sincere are gonna be saved out of this. Let me keep going. A day of darkness and gloom, a day of clouds and a thick darkness. As the morning spread upon the mountains, a great people and a strong, there hath no been ever light the light, neither shall be any more after it, even to the years of many generations. A fire devoureth before them. This is beautiful. And behind them a flame burneth. Listen carefully. Like I just told you, there's going to be a time of Jacob's trouble, but we're going to be saved out of it. So here's a really, this is a, this is a very good point. It says, Eve, and, 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 um, it says, um, let me read it again. A dark, gloomy, um, a day of dark and gloominess, a day of clouds and thick darkness, as the morning spread upon the mountains. A great and a strong people have not been ever the like, neither shall be any more after even the years of many generations. A fire devoureth before them, and behind them a flame burneth. The land is as the garden of Eden before them, future, and behind them a desolate wilderness. Yea, nothing shall escape them. So, if it's telling you that our future is the Garden of Eden, but if you look into your past, it's nothing but sorrows, we need to look to the future. We need to come back to this truth. The only people that are going to get saved out of this are the children that follow the instructions, the children of Israel that are sincere. 
let me keep let, let, let me get a precept on that because um, when we blow the trumpet and sound the alarm all the inhabitants of the land are going to tremble so together what do we need to do when we're trembling that means that we're uh, understanding the truth that's coming out and the fear of Yahweh, Bahashim Yahweh Shai should come upon you and that, that fear of Yahweh is you coming back to the lost after the commandments. That's the only way you can truly show that you truly fear Yahweh. And through that fear, you show how much you love him by following sincerely. To You know what? If your dad tells you to do something, you do it. And if you don't do it, he punishes you. It's that simple. Why do we call him the father and then not do what he says and expect to not be punished? So we got to come back to that truth. Like it says, the land is as the Garden of Eden before them. So the people that, that come back to this truth, you're going back home to the kingdom. But if you look into your past, and you look behind you, I guarantee you all you're going to, you're not seeing. I, I mean, I was telling my family this morning when I was teaching them this class, you might have one or two good memories, like my, my older son and my wife. We might have maybe one or two good memories that we can cleave to. But it's shrouded in sorrow. So it's like every once in a while something good happens. Not every once in a while something bad happens. That would be too easy. But let's get, um, like I said, we need to come back together. That's the blowing of the trumpet when we're all starting to understand that truth. So let's get that. Zephaniah chapter 2. And it reads, starting from the top, gather yourselves together. Get gathered together, O nation not desired. You can't go anywhere in this earth right now and be an Israelite and not get oppressed. Remember when everybody went back to Africa? They all got raped, robbed, and murdered, and sent back to America. The Africans didn't want American black people in their land. So you guys gotta understand, there's nowhere you can go, and that is the only other place where there is all swarty, melanated people. They didn't want to see you because they're not Israel. They're Canaan, their hand, you are um, Shem, you're two different nations of people, that's why they don't want you in their land, that's not your land until the Most High comes and gives us back our spot, we have nothing, that's why you don't hear of Israel being a nation, you hear Israelis, which are not us, they came to be a nation in 1948, right and anyway that's a whole different story for a different day let's go back to Joel Joel chapter 2 uh, we're going to jump up to verse 11 and the Lord shall utter his voice before his army for his camp is very great for he is strong that executeth his word for the day of Yahweh is great and very terrible. Who can abide in it? So the day of Yahweh is very great and terrible. Who's going to be able to stand up and, and actually be in that day? Therefore, also now, saith Yahweh, turn ye indeed to me with all your heart, with fasting and weeping and mourning. So that's important too. How do you return? By repenting, by fasting, by weeping, by mourning, by coming back to the laws, the statutes within the laws, and the direct commands according to your knowledge. Okay? According to your knowledge, to the best of your ability, applying what you learn that you know you can do to your life. I'm never going to stop saying that until he comes and gets me because you still have time to repent. But when that time is up, it's up. It's up, up. And he's coming with great fury and great anger. So let me read it again. Therefore also now saith Yahweh, turn ye even to me with all your heart, with all of your mind. So you've got to put your mind back in the truth. Let's keep going. Let's jump over to the book of Zechariah. Like I said, I just got a bunch of notes that I wanted to bring out today. So um like I always say, if you got eyes to see and ears to hear, I hope you can um, 
um, get something out of this message today. So Zechariah chapter 2, going to verse 7. Deliver thyself, O Zion, that dwelleth with the daughter of Babylon. That's, that's beautiful too. So it's saying you got to deliver yourself. How do you deliver yourself, O Zion? How are you going to deliver yourself from the daughter of Babylon? And what is Babylon? Because this place is called um, spiritual Sodom and Egypt, but it's also called secret Babylon. The reason why this, this society that we live in is called secret Babylon, because when you celebrate Christmas, when you celebrate Easter, Mother's Day, Father's Day, those are all Babylonian. Even the way you guys get married, wearing the wedding ring, that's Babylonian, okay? When, when you have um, uh, immaculate conception, that comes from Babylon. Nimrod's mother said that she was uh, immaculately, um, how to say it, she, she immaculately became pregnant through the spirit with Nimrod as Talmud. It's written in the scriptures. I'm not going to get it. I'm just giving you an example. This is what secret Babylon is. The way of life. The society. Everything about this lifestyle and your, the, what, the, the God you worship, it's all female fertility goddesses. What do you think Easter is? What do you think Mother's Day is? Even Christmas, Nimrod has to be dead. You have to put a Yule log in your fireplace and then magically a tree appears after the Yule log burns out and it has presents under it. It literally tells you in the scriptures in Jeremiah 10, 1 through 5, don't go out in the forest and cut down a tree. Don't take the two boards and a nail to hold it upright and then deck it in silver and gold. That's why this place, that's why it's saying you got to save yourself out of Babylon. How are we going to do it? Let's get it. Let's go to Revelation chapter 18 and verse 4. Revelation 18 and 4. And I heard another voice from heaven saying, Come out of her, my people, that you be not partakers of her sins, that you receive not of her flesh. So how do you come out of her? How do you save yourself? You remove yourself spiritually. There's no way you're going to just physically stand up and walk out of this place and be someplace safe. That is a pipe dream. That's why all of those go back to Africa Israelites ended up getting raped, robbed, and murdered. I mean, there's no other way to put it. Out in the streets, kicked out of the country. But it says to come out of her, my people, that you be not partakers of her sins. So what that's really telling you is to come out of the lifestyle that these this culture has taught you. Come back to the truth of what the scriptures are saying. Live your life wholly righteous by the scriptures, sincerely with joyfulness and gladness of heart. That's how you do it. That's how you come out of her. You get away from this wicked ass lifestyle and you just follow the instructions in the scriptures and it tells you how to live. That's the crazy thing. Most people, 99% of people don't read the Bible. They wait for somebody else to tell them something that they read in the Bible, and then they wholeheartedly go out with that piece of information that they didn't even read for themselves and try to use it as, as um, doctrine. You shouldn't do that. Read it for yourself. Learn it. And when you do, you'll know the instructions. You'll know what to do in the rough times. Let's keep going. Because when you come out of her, this is where um, the book of Sirach, Chapter 2 and verse 1 comes into play. Sirach is also known as Ecclesiasticus. It's in the Apocrypha, which is one of the books that was kicked out of the Bible. The word Apocrypha means secret document, not for public use. So we have to go into the Apocrypha because we need to find out what these secret documents are saying. So in Sirach, chapter 2, verse 1, it literally tells you. It says... My son, if thou come to serve the Lord, prepare thy soul for temptation. So if you're going to come out of her, that you be not partakers of her sins, this is going to be the hard part. There's always, you're always going to be tempted with new things to come back into this worldly system. So to so wholeheartedly, with, with all of your heart, your mind, and your soul, you just got to really just turn your back on this place spiritually. Okay? Because if you don't, you're going to end up in Jacob's trouble. Let's go ahead to... Um, Go back to the book of Jeremiah.
um, chapter 51. And we're going to go to verse 6. Where we, that's where the. This is where the point's at. Verse 6, and it reads Flee out of the midst of Babylon. Deliver every man his soul. Be not cut off in her iniquity. For this is the time of Yahweh's vengeance. Revenge. This is the time of Yahweh's revenge. If you can't see it now, you're probably never going to see it. If you don't understand what's going on, then you're either in denial or you truly just weren't chosen to the truth. But we all see what's going on. We all see. And let me keep reading. Deliver every man's soul to God. This time of God's vengeance. He will render unto her a recompense. And the her is the daughter of Babylon. And the recompense is a repayment. And it's going to be upon your own Okay. okay, let's jump around some more. Let's go to the book of uh, Matthew. Like I said, let's read that. Let's get 51 and 6 again. It says, Deliver every man his soul. When I told you that um, Revelation 18 and 4, it says, Come out of her, my people. When I, I, I showed you and um, Zechariah 2 and 7 that to save yourself from Babylon because you're 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 with Babylon so you're in Babylon so let's get it because how I mean we're, we're going to we're going to um, we're going to have to come when we come back to the laws we have to stay with the laws is what I'm trying to say you can't just be like how the Christians are, for the lack of um, better terms. They'll just say that the Lord knows my spirit and they'll go about their everyday life. It doesn't say that. Once you hear this truth, you got to continuously build in the truth to be successful at the end. You can't start building a house and then walk away and expect it to be finished. No. So this is the house of Yahweh. And so when, when we um, come back to this truth, let me read it again. Flee out of the midst of Babylon, deliver every man his soul, be not cut off of her iniquity, for this is the time of Yahweh's vengeance. So we have to, um, how would you say, we have to, to um, cleave. We have to cleave to the word. We have to cleave to the truth and the instructions. So let me get that. Because as long as you don't fall away, the Most High is going to do with you, but he's going to, like the Christians say, he's going to know your spirit. So um, I'm going to assume that, that when you, you're cleaving, that you're doing it in righteousness and joyfulness of heart. So you're going to cleave to him, let me show you. And then at thy last end, you're going to be just delivered. So you're so anybody that's saying that they're delivered at this time is absolutely wrong. It's so hot out here, I'm starting to get jumbled on my words, sweating like I stole something out here. So, I'll show you. So, uh, like I said, cleave to him, depart not away, which goes into the um, uh, 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 Sirach chapter 2, I think, verse 2. But when you go into Matthew 24 and 13, it says, But he that shall endure until the end, the same shall be saved. So the person that comes back to the truth, to pull themselves out of spiritual Babylon, that same person that sticks to the truth and builds in the truth is also going to be the same person that was worthy of the kingdom that shall be saved. Let's keep going. Let's jump down to verse 22. And except those days should be shortened, there should no flesh be saved, but for the elect's sake, those days shall be shortened. So, we know that we've got to endure till the end. We know that we've got to come out of this system. We know that this system is going to do everything that it can to pull us back in. That's why in Sirach 2 and 1, I keep reminding you that it says that if thou comest to serve Yahweh, prepare thyself for temptation. Well, that's all that um, this place is, is one giant temptation after another to keep the Israelites from coming back to the truth. I mean... It's practically illegal to say something in a music song that's positive, 
But if we go around telling everybody how we want to rape, rob, murder, and take each other's wives, then that's top 10 hit. So you got to ask yourself, why is that the top 10 hit? Why, why is it like that in this society? This is what we need to come out of. This is the temptation to come back. They even, even in your music, they put a, um, an 808 drum in there that actually, um, that actually affects your spirit negatively. So I'm not a doctor or a scientist, but I don't want to try and get too deep into that. Let's jump around some more. Let's go back to the book of Isaiah. Chapter 19. And the points in verse 14. So, this is really important too. I love this. This is where we're at right now as a society. This is why when, when it says, uh, come out of her, my people, and then I tell you, he that endureth until the end, because when you go to Sirach 201, it says that there's going to be a lot of temptation when you serve the Lord. Listen to this. Let's go into it. Isaiah 19 and 14. The Lord hath mingled a perverse spirit in the midst thereof. And they have caused Egypt to err in every work as a drunken man staggereth in his vomit. You see that? So the reason why things are um, starting to change the way they do because Yahweh Bahashim Yahweh Shai, he mingled the perverse spirit. He allowed this perverse spirit to be put on the world because everybody's so wicked. So the wicked is now increased to the point where he's looking at us again. <laughs> Hold on. And it's beautiful. Oh, that's heavy. Let me read it again. The Lord hath mingled a perverse spirit in the midst thereof, and they have caused Egypt to err in every work thereof, as a drunken man staggereth in his vomit. The point here is like, because of this perverse spirit, it's causing the whole place to fall apart. And the water of Rock Daya Hawa, the water of Rock Daya Hawa Shah, call Halaya Laya Hawa Baha Shim Yahawa Shah, Waha Rakap Dash, Rakap Dash. You know why? Because all praise, honor, and glory, and be thankful to the Most High because He's doing this. And now we can see it. First we heard about it, but now we're watching it go down. So I'm thankful to even be here in this time. I'm thankful to be here in these last days just to show my faith by coming out here on the streets. We're about to be in Jacob's trouble. We're not there yet, but believe me, we're getting close. And after this next presidential election, you better believe things are gonna go down. No matter who wins, there's gonna be a civil war. It's gonna happen. Let's go into, let's stay in the book of Isaiah though. We just read 14 and the Lord hath mingled a perverse spirit in the midst thereof. Great, let's go backwards over to Isaiah, Shalom. Let's go backwards over to verse two. And I will set, now he's got the perverse spirit. Now, let's go back to verse 2. I will set Egyptian against Egyptian, and they shall fight every one against his brother, and every one against his neighbor, city against city, and kingdom against kingdom. And the spirit of Egypt shall fail in the midst thereof, and I will destroy the counsel thereof, and they shall seek to the idols, to the charmers, to them that have familiar spirits, and to the wizards. And it's funny because you got your idols, well, you know, graven images. These people are playing, praying to statues. You got your charmers. Well, those are, I, I'm, I'm just gonna say out of my own vain imagination, today's charmers are all of your actors and actresses and entertainers because they'll do whatever they're told by the shadow government because they know that you guys worship them. And then you've got your, you've got your, um, your, your, your familiar spirits which those are, I, I want to say, the, all, the people I know is that deal with familiar spirits the most are women. Because every time you are with a man, you take on that familiar spirit of the man, and it never goes away. So a woman that has a high body count has a lot of spirits on her, and they don't leak. But, um, those familiar spirits, people that deal with familiar spirits are people that are dealing with the dead. Necromancers. 
But anyway, also, wizards. You know what your modern day wizard is? It is your doctors. They took off, so who, so if you have a witch, and you have a witch, what does she do? She takes all these different ingredients and puts them in her cauldron and then she stirs it up and then she puts it in a cup and says, drink this, it's gonna change your life. What does a doctor do? He takes all these fucking different ingredients, but he's a little more sophisticated. He has lights, cameras, and action, presses it into a little pill. He says, take this and it'll save your life. So what's the difference? What's the difference between a wizard and a doctor? So the modern day wizard is your doctor. That's why they're telling you, you gotta get the, gotta get the Pope, jab, the V-Nation, you know what I'm saying? They, they, they're pushing this stuff on us because they're not who they say they are. Let's keep going. Let's jump back uh, up to verse 20. And it shall be a sign and for a witness unto the Lord of hosts, that's the Shabbat or Yahweh, in the land of Egypt, for they shall cry unto the Lord because of the oppressors, and he shall send them a savior, a great one. And he shall deliver them. So once again, we're in this great trouble, and he's telling us, I'm going to send somebody down to save you guys. The guys that had the blood sprinkled over them on the Exodus when Moses gave them the laws, nobody else was there except for Israel. So only Israel has laws. That's why nobody suffers curses except for Israel because nobody else is under the curse of the law. So we're the ones that have to come back. We're the ones that have to do what the Most High says. The world was given into the hands of the wicked. Job 9 and 24, who runs this motherfucker? Because it's not us. We don't run this place, so we know that we're at the bottom, and that's a dead giveaway of what the Bible says about the Israelites. You're not gonna be on the top, you're gonna be on the bottom. You're not going to sell to people. You're going to be buying people. You're not going to lend. You're going to borrow. You're going to go to your oppressor in nakedness, in hunger, in thirst, and in want of all things. And he shall put a yoke of iron upon thy neck until thou be destroyed. So we're the only ones in trouble. What is this? You know what that is? That's a physical yoke of iron right there. They, you know why they put that yoke? Because we were slaves. And what did we do? We ran. We didn't want to be fucking slaves. So when we ran from them, they put these giant iron yokes on us because the fucking bars off them would catch on the trees. And then they'd beat the brakes off of you, like this guy. And then they would send you back out. And please believe me, after they put this thing on you enough times, you ain't gonna run no more. So you're mentally destroyed at the end of that. That is a physical, um, that is a, a, a physical example of that yoke of iron. So this stuff really happened to us. They don't want you to know that the Bible's actually saying. And now we're coming into Jacob's trouble where we're at the end of it. So when they say that their time has grown short, they know that they're at their last end. Do you know how long uh, a dynasty normally lasts in history? About 250 years. Do you know how long America has been a country? Yeah. About 250 years, do some math. So it's coming to a head. Do you know when most every society through history has um, been destroyed? That's when a woman was in rulership. And when men dressed like women and women dressed like men. Don't think that this hasn't happened before. There's nothing new under the sun. This is the way every society gets destroyed. When women become powerful. That's why it says, I do not. Um, give woman authority over what is it? I do not give a woman a woman I do not usurp authority over a man. Watch, I'll get it. Because this is what's this is this is it. We're at the end and this is proof. A woman shall not usurp authority over a man. There it is. So I'm going to get it in the King James Version, then I'm going to read it in a couple different versions so we can make sure we're saying the right thing. You know, because the King James, most people don't understand. You don't believe it at all? Well, you know who wrote the King James Version? Black people. They didn't speak English, they spoke Hebrew. They, they interpreted it correctly. Then Constantine came back and he added like words like Easter and little stupid things, but you know. Yeah, so. That's why, I'm but that's why I own I own I own multiple Bibles, but 
the King James Version is the only one for us until you go back to like the interlinear and then you got to go into the Hebrew and the Greek and the Latin. I have all those Bibles at home. And those Bibles line up almost word for word to the King James. So my interlinear comes, I, have to, I can't just have an interlinear Bible. I have to have an exhaustive Strong's Concordance also. So each little number by each word, the concordance actually tells me what the word means for real. So when someone tells you, um, what's the definition of nigga? Well, according to the Strong's Concordance, it means Christian prophets such as Barnabas and Simeon. Why don't we tell you that? So when you see all these Christian soldiers, you know which ones I'm talking about. You can tell them, you don't look like a nigga to me. You straight up don't. You are not one of us. So stop playing. That goes back into that picture right there. Revert, re replacement theology. Iconoclasm. They know what the words mean. They know that Niger is actually nigger area. So that river Niger was nigger area where they made all of the Israelites dwell. All I do is study. That's all I do. So I know that the King James Version is actually going to line up. That's why I use it the most. But I do like to go outside the King James Version because some of the breakdowns are just... It just, it's so well worded, you couldn't say it better yourself. Yes, yeah, so this like is the truth. To kill the yes, so to kill something could be like to stop production of it. But to murder someone means to take their life. So, King James Version, 1 Timothy 2 and 12. I suffer not a woman to teach, nor to usurp authority over a man, but to be in silence. Now look at this one. Let's go to, um, um, let's go to the New Living Translation. I do not let women teach men or have authority over them. Let them listen quietly. So for us to have a female leader in rulership, she's already done it for four years. Now she wants to be like the main leader. That's it. It's over. It's a dead issue. We're finally at that point where what they would say the veil is being lifted. In other words, when you see their secret parts, you see all of their plans and their plots. They can no longer hide from you. The, the, the way they lied to us in the past, they can't lie to us like that anymore. There's too many of us out there that have too much knowledge. That's why it was punishable by death for us to read books in the first place. We invented everything. We're fucking smarter than them. We're stronger. We're more athletic. And you proved me wrong. Who built this motherfucker? Who built this place? Oh, you're just like, you know what? You other nations are just like a bunch of women. We'll take it from here. Well, yeah, we'll build the place, but you can take it from here. I bet. Well, let me go and take all my bricks back one by one. You build it yourself next time. You see what I'm saying? They didn't, they didn't invent anything. They didn't invent anything, but they're going to tell us how they taught us. When they came over here, do you know that they stunk? They had disease? They didn't even change clothes until they practically fell off of it. That was that was that was Christopher Columbus. Christopher Columbus. Yeah, just from the disease. These people are nasty. So we had to teach them how to wash their clothes, wash their ass. We gave them because we already invented toothpaste, toothbrush. We had fucking bold grills in our teeth. We had all that. Everything that you can think of under the sun, we had um, strip malls. We had um, irrigation. We had water ducts. All of this that they destroyed when they came over here. Oh yeah, we had everything already. We had everything. It was set up. They came in and destroyed everything and built over it. They, and then they told us that we were stupid. We're not stupid. If I'm so dumb, stay the fuck off my toilet and century in Arizona, leave my air conditioners off. Stay out of my refrigerator. We invented all those things. Who invented the horse riding saddle? Who invented the boot? Who, you see what I'm saying? All that stuff is us. We're the ones that are getting judged too. We're the salt of the earth. Though you could tell who Yahweh Baha Shimmy Hawashai loved just by all the inventions alone. He ain't dealing with nobody else. He ain't dealing with nobody else. Look at what they've put us through. You can just look down here. Is your is your is are you on that list? Because if you are, he's coming for you. Whether it be for good or for evil. But if we don't come back to the truth, he's putting us, right, like I said, in Jacob's trouble. And that is that time, like, we, people like say, oh, we're in Jacob Trouble right now. Well, actually, no. There's people out there with PlayStation 5. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah, they're playing video games and shit. One person has it really bad, but the next person doesn't. No, in Jacob Trouble, we're all, it's over. We're all going to get, um, we're all going to get, um, how would you say, um, we're all going to feel it. So I'm going to go back to um, Isaiah. Isaiah chapter 19, KJV. 
I'm gonna read 20 again. And then um, I'm gonna bring out that apocrypha, which is, like I said, that is um, secret document, not for public use. Come on. It hides the it hides the one app from me because it's the only authorized King James version. So it'd be like 10 pages down if I don't ask for it. They don't even want you to know about it. that has the apocrypha though. So I'll, I'll I'll read it again. So um, Isaiah uh, 19 and 20 is what we're gonna go to. 19 and 20, and it reads, And it shall be for a sign and for a witness unto Yahweh, Lord of hosts, in the land of Egypt. Egypt, the word Egypt means slavery. This is the land of slavery. We're the slaves. So when you say secret um, um, Sodom in Egypt, gay marriage and slavery are here. That's why it says that. So when he's talking about Egypt, he's talking about um, the word actually means, not, not in every context, though. not talking about slavery in every context, but the Egypt actually means slavery. It's a Greek word. The place that we call Egypt is actually called Mezarim. The son of Cain, I think, and he built cities, and his name was Mezarim. And so all the pyramids and all that stuff. Okay. And it shall be for a sign and a witness unto the Lord of hosts in the land of Egypt, for they shall cry unto Yahweh because of the oppressors. And so it says in this day we're going to cry out, and but we're going to praise the Lord. And we're going to call him by his name. So that's how I know the name I'm calling on. When I say Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai, do you know that um, in the media world, they'll, they'll, they block my videos. They tell me I can't say that. Christian God, you can't say that name. But you can say Jesus and Christ. The letter J didn't even come out until 15, in the 1520s. But Yahweh Shai, he is deliverer. Or Yahweh Ha, Wah Ha, together as Wah. Yahawa. I know what I'm talking about. I've been studying this for 10 years plus. So when and then you know what they did? They said, nah man, you can't be saying that. But they just said, like, but in the same breath, oh, you can use any name you want. You can call him Parquet Butter if you want. But but I can't say Yahawa. Bahashim. Yahweh Shai. Bahashim in the name. <laughs> so Yahweh in the name. Yahweh Shai. So don't we say, um, well, we're gonna go to God in the name of Jesus. But well, we, we, when I say Jesus, don't you think of that guy over there? But right here it says Revelation 1 14. His head and his hair were white like wool. Huh. White as snow. Huh. And his eyes were the flame of fire. Huh. Because when you get real angry, your eyes turn red because the blood rushes to your head. It's not because you drink too much wine, it's because you're angry. How do I know? I got so angry once I busted a blood vessel in my eye. Whole eye was red. So his eyes are like a flame of fire. Why would he be angry? Because he's coming as a lamb and he's seeing all the oppression against his people and he's doing nothing about it at this time. Hell yeah, he's pissed off. And his feet like unto fine brass as if it was burned in a furnace. Well, that, show me, come here. Does that look burned in a, does anything on that look burnt to you? Yeah, I already know that. It's not, <laughs> it's not so that's why I don't say Jesus at all in any way, shape, or form because that's the image I get in my mind when I say that word. But when I say Yahweh Shai, I see that dude in my mind. Yeah, Yahweh Bahashim, Yahweh Shai. Because that's our savior. That's the devil. That's the straight modern day depiction of Satan, pretty much. They want you to worship. See, every other, if you ever notice that every other nation, every other kind and country, they'll have a God. And it's so crazy because that God is just like them. But our God, we're not allowed to have our God. No, our God has to look like our enemy. Have you ever noticed that? Does anybody else have to have a God look like an enemy? She can't do it. Yeah, they're, the people out here today, the wickedness has been increased. The, um, yeah, the, the wickedness has increased, but it's all it's all for a reason. So, so um, they're going to cry unto the Lord because of the oppressors. And I'm going to go and get this the apocrypha real quick, because I'll show you what our oppression is in the last days. I will be crying out. One of the main forms of oppression that they're going to put us through. Let's go to the book of Ecclesiasticus, chapter three, and then we're going to start at verse seven. 
Barak. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Baruch. My bad, I meant Baruch chapter 3, in verse, starting at verse 7. And it reads, And for this cause thou hast put thy fear in our hearts. So he, he, he opened our minds back up so we could understand truth again. And that fear is the law, statutes, and commandments. Um, to the intent that we should call upon thy name and praise thee in our captivity. For we have called to mind all the iniquity of our forefathers who sinned before thee. So here's the point. Like I said, how are we going to know to call that we're calling upon him in the right name and how we're in that right time right now? Let's read verse 8. Behold, yet this day in our captivity we where thou hast scattered us for a reproach and a curse and to be subject to payments. To be subject to payments according to all the iniquities of our fathers which departed from the Lord Yahweh. So what do we what what happened to us? No matter what we do, no matter where we go, no matter what, they charge us for every little thing. And if you're not subject to payment, I say try not paying your light, gas, your rent. They kick you out on the street. Then they'll take you to court and try and sue you for the money when you didn't have it in the first place. So believe me, you're going to be calling on him in your captivity. But you're going to be joyfully praising his name. But you're still under, under, under the oppression. Which is a beautiful thing. Because if you're going to be righteous enough to know that you're in oppression and know that you have enough faith that this is almost over and you're still crying out for him and joyful to be an Israelite. Proud. The only time I'll ever use the word proud. I'm proud to be here. I'm proud to be doing Yahweh's work. Without that, I have nothing. This world means nothing to me. I can't wait until this place is over. We got oppressors on every corner. We got nothing but a brick oven to stand in. We're not allowed to drink our water. We're not allowed to go fishing for the food. We can't do anything in this land anymore unless you pay. They want us to pay to breathe air. And believe me, we pay an air tax. If you have a car, what do you pay? You pay for your tag area. What is that for? A smog check. So you're definitely paying an air tax. There is nothing under the sun that we're not being oppressed over. And they're about to finish the job to where every single thing will have a price tag on it. So we're going to be crying out. Let's keep going. Let's go to the book of Daniel. I'm glad we're crying out because it shows where we're at in the prophecy. Where is Daniel? Daniel chapter 12. And starting from the top. And it reads. And at the time shall Michael stand up. That's the archangel Michael. The great prince which standeth for the children of thy people. And there shall be a time of trouble. Such as never was since there was a nation. Even to the same time. And at that time, thy people shall be delivered. Everyone that shall be found written in the book. So everybody that has come back to the law, statutes, and commandments, everybody that is keeping the laws to the best of their ability, according to their knowledge, applying what they learned in their life, those are the people that Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shai has written in the book of life. The one third and 144,000 elect within that one third that are teaching this truth. Those are the people that are gonna be saved. Two thirds of you have been set aside just to be stubble. And what is stubble for? It's to start a fire. Stubble is for starting a fire, okay? So he tells you, bundle up all of the um, tares and put them in a bundle for the fire, but take all of my wheat and put it in the barn where it's safe. So we're getting ready to be put in a safe place. We will be delivered everyone that shall be found written in the book. Let's move around some more. Let's go to the book of um, Malachi. Chapter 4 and verse 1. Malachi chapter 4 starting from the top. For behold, the day cometh that shall burn as an oven, and the proud, man, oh man, 
the arrogant. The so when when you're proud, you're you're arrogant, or you you think yourself to be better than other people when you're not. Okay. The proud, yea, and all they that do and all that do wickedly shall be stubble. And that day and in the day that cometh shall burn them up, saith the Lord of hosts, that it shall leave them neither root nor branch. So when you have no root nor branch, it means that you're going to be completely terminated. You'll be nothing left. That's what it's saying. Let's go to 2 Thessalonians. Chapter 1. And we're going to go down to the point. It's in verse 8. In flame. In flaming fire, taking vengeance on them that know not Yahweh and that obey not the gospel of Yahweh Shai HaMashiach. So, I'm trying to see where I should have started there, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna stay right there with a inflaming fire taking revenge on them who know not Yahweh. So doesn't he, isn't there, doesn't he tell you that? I did not know you. Doesn't he tell you that he didn't know you? Let's get it. So this is what's going to happen. He's going to take revenge on those people that don't follow the laws. But this is going to be the funny thing because these people, there's a lot of you like you Christians, you guys actually think you're keeping the laws right now and you're righteous, you're saved, God knows your spirit, but then you, you run into an Israelite and you find out you're not saved. God doesn't know you at all. In fact, let me get it. Matthew 7 and 23 and it reads and I will profess unto them I never knew you depart from me you workers of iniquity so you workers of sin you're not known in the kingdom you're you're set aside for for stumble Thank you. you're, you're, you're being set aside for stumble in other words you're gonna burn Let me keep jumping around a little bit. Let's go back over to um, 2 Peter's. Let's go to 2 Peter's chapter. Um, let's go to 2 Peter's chapter 3. Second Peter's chapter 3, starting at verse 7. And it reads, But the heavens and the earth, which are now by the same word are kept in store, reserved unto fire against the day of judgment and perdition of ungodly men. So the, this this place is literally, you've got reservations. <laughs> you guys have literally made reservations to be burned and cooked. Now, one third of you, like I said, one third of you are gonna come back to this truth and I'm pretty sure we're getting close to that one third being sealed. I know the 144,000 elect have to be around here somewhere teaching. Somebody has to be part of that 144,000. Like I said, I'm, I'm mainly a disciple being taught by the, by the prophets. So let me keep going. Let's go over to the, back to the book of Malachi in chapter 3. Kind of got thrown off because, you know, I had a people here and Usually you don't get visitors, so that was kind of cool. Malachi um, chapter 3. And going in, the point is in, this is beautiful too, this is the point's in verse 2. In fact, I'm going to read, I'm going to start from the top. Behold, I will send my messenger, and he shall prepare the way before me. And Yahweh, whom ye seek, shall suddenly come to his temple. Okay, that's funny. You know, you're going to be like a thief in the night. You're going to suddenly show up and it's going to be too late. Even messenger of the covenant. There's a... Uh, I don't know what that stands for. I'll show you guys. I'll show you guys. I, uh... Where is it? Even the messenger of the covenant. So, I don't know if you can see it. It's like a, a B-E, but a little tiny E. 
I don't know what that is. Can't know everything. But, uh, so, even the messenger of the covenant whom ye delight in, behold, he shall come, saith the Shabbat, the Lord of hosts. But now here's the, um, so he's going to come, he's going to show up. All right, all praises. Now listen to this, this is beautiful. But whom shall abide in the day of his coming, and whom shall stand when he appeareth? For he is like the refiner's fire, and like unto the fuller's scope. So who's, who's going to be like, and, and it's funny, because to me I'm laughing inside because I think of Christians directly who are calling upon Yahweh Bahashim, Yahweh Shai, but they're actually calling Jesus in Christ, and they're, they're celebrating Christmas and Easter, and that's all Babylonian. And, the, and it's like they think that they're going to abide in the day of the Lord. So it, it is kind of funny. So let's get it. Um, um, who shall abide in the day of the Lord? For he is like a refiner's fire. But um, let me get it. Who's going to abide in the day of the Lord? And what is the day of the Lord even going to be like? What do they mean by the day of the Lord? Let me show you. Let me show you. Let's go into what is the day of the Lord. I'm going to give you a little taste of what he means by the day of the Lord. This is Isaiah 66, starting at verse 15, because he's the refiner's fire, right? All of this is talking about stubble and being burned and getting cooked. And, and this is all going into Jacob's trouble. And it's not over because all this judgment, it's mainly, mostly talking to the two-thirds of Israel and then the other nations. Not everybody. It's the two-thirds of Israel. He cares about his children first and then everybody else. So um, Isaiah 66 and 15. For behold, Yahweh will come with fire. And with his chariots like a whirlwind to render his anger with fury and his rebuke with flames of fire. For by fire and by his sword, Yahweh will plead with all flesh. And the slain of Yahweh shall be many. That's what the day of the Lord's going to be like. He's coming back to plead with everybody. But he's not going to come in. Most people think that they're going to get a chance to speak their peace. <laughs> you had all your life to do that. And he told you, do it this way. Don't do it that way. So you're like, I'm going to do it that way. I'm not going to do it this way. So you, you went against Yahweh's judgment. Okay? So let's, um, I'm going to get out a few more scriptures and then we're going to shut it down. Let's go to Isaiah chapter 47. So we'll stay in Isaiah, go to chapter 47. And we'll get the point. It's in uh, 14. Huh. I was wondering if there was a cop literally sitting right there and this guy came flying. Is she going to get him? Nope. Nope, she decided to let him go. That was a close one. See these Israelites, man, they've been coming out here wilding. They'd be out here wilding. So um, Isaiah 47 and the poison 14. Behold, they shall be as stubble. That's you two thirds. If you find the day of the Lord's coming, he's going to plead with all flesh with fire. The fire shall burn them. They shall not deliver themselves from the power of the flame. There shall not be a coal to warm at, nor fire to sit before it. <laughs> Did you hear that? You're not going to be able to save yourself once it's too late. So you've got to seek the Lord while he may be found. I'm going to bring out um, one more. One more. And the, one more, one more, one more uh, passage, and then we're gonna we're gonna shut it down. So let's go to Isaiah chapter two, and we're gonna start at verse twelve. Huh. For the day of the Lord of hosts, Shabbat, Yahweh's army, shall be upon everyone that is proud and lofty, and upon everyone that is lifted up, and he shall be brought low. So all these people that are way up here, 
are going to be put back down in earth. And upon all the cedars of Lebanon that are high and lifted up, and upon all the oaks of Bashan, and upon the high mountains, and upon all the high hills that are lifted up. The mountains and hills represent rulership. The, the Lebanons, I mean, I could have swore when Yahawashai gave that guy sight, he said, I could see men walking as trees. Okay, men walking as trees. They're all gonna be brought down low. Let's keep reading. Upon every high tower, I'm sorry, upon every high mountain, upon all the hills that are lifted up, and upon every high tower, upon every fenced wall, upon all the ships of Tarshish, upon all the pleasant pictures. And the loftiness of men shall be bowed down, and the haughtiness of men shall be made low, and the Lord alone shall be exalted in that day. So we need Jacob's trouble. At this point, we need Jacob's trouble so we can get back to the point where everybody worships Yahweh Baha Shem, Yahweh Shai, and comes back to this truth. Two thirds of you aren't going to do it. The rest of you nations will have a foot in your throat before you, and you probably still won't admit who we are. But that's okay. Because if you got eyes to see, if you got ears to hear, I, I only hope one thing that, that, that something that happened today that you were able to um, righteously just sincerely get something out of this message facing the east i want to give all praise honor and glory to yahweh bahashim yahweh shai bahashim rakakadash and double honors to the elder apostles the prophets and teachers also the the disciples and the sincere akiawa akwa salutations